Okay, so to start things off, I'm going to do a basic seascape. I'll start making my horizon. And I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible, so I'm just going to use blue and white for my overall water color in this scene. Now on the horizon, I'm going to mix some red with that. That's the only place in this that I'm going to use any red, because in the deep water, in an ocean, there might be a coral reef here that the light bounces off of the bottom and turns the water more green, a bright turquoise green hue, but in the deep water, that, that's not the case. And so, where there's less green, there's more red. Now I'm going to speed through this so that I can do a good example for you. And then I'm just going to kind of fine tune it off camera, so don't get mad at me for that. When you're doing a gradient, this is a gradient where you fade from one color to the next. You get your, you do two colors at a time. You get your starting color, and you get the color you want to go to, and then you blend them together. So I want to use this color on the horizon, and then I want to use a blue and white mix toward the middle. I want it to get lighter and lighter as it goes down, so let me show you. I use this four inch roller. I always roll this on at this 45 degree angle because it smears it and rolls it at the same time, which causes it not to splatter. And it helps to mix it. Okay, so you see I have two colors. Once I have the two colors on, then I can come back with my brush and blend them together. All right, so now I'm gonna start putting this lighter color on here. We're getting lighter, lighter, lighter. I have a few light spots in here. I'm just gonna leave them. Maybe I'll fix them later if I feel like I need to. And I'm gonna start up here on this darker water and just start making some waves. And the key here is that I get nice feathered edges. They taper out smaller, smaller as they taper. And I try to stay very similar with all of my angles. I don't suddenly do one in an angle that nothing else is because that tells your eyes something very strange is going on. You're no longer on planet Earth. And I'm just doing these swooping motions. Now, sometimes I do the frown. Sometimes I do the smile. Sometimes I build a frown out of smiles. Now, if I just take this color and I just want a level spot, maybe, maybe this water isn't completely let maybe it's not even maybe the same thing is not going on, on everywhere so if i just if i just make a spot that just has a lot of solid color that tells you that that's got very little waves going that's a level spot on the water so you see i'm using this color to communicate to your to your eyes what shapes are in this translucent water so now that I've taken all this time to make all these pretty waves in here, I'm going to paint a big old wave right over the front of it. Okay. So bright green, right? Ruined it. But we need to have more green in this because as this water is brightened by the sun, it's going to become more and more green. It may not be a true green, just more green than the water that's darker. Darker at the base, you want it to drop right down into that, into that blue color there. And I think I need to use more paint. Ooh, I like that bluer tone. It's greener than this, but bluer than this. I like that. This looks good too. This looks good too. We'll do a, a compromise between the two. The white water. Pure white. But it's not going to be pure because I got all this green and blue in my brush. But it's whiter than anything else in the picture. So I'm just going to start moving my brush in the direction that I want this to go. I'm just swooping my brush just like it's just piling over here. We'll say that it's, it's starting to break right here. And here we'll do a little bit 
Now they don't have the same, I've seen a lot of waves that were, where the artist made it breaking evenly across the whole wave and I just, I just don't think that looks as good. It's nice if you make it breaking in some areas but not others. So now I've established like four or five different rows of colors that I can systematically go through in order to make a breaking wave. The bright white water, the shadow of the white water, the shadow cast on the wave that's not white water, then the highly saturated bright color coming through the wave, then the shadow that's cast on the surface of the water. It's one, two, three, four, five stripes of color that you just kind of stagger across. And if you just get those colors right, it's amazing how quickly it starts to look like one of these crashing waves. Now, I'm, I need to pay attention where I made my waves. I mean, I don't need to, but it's good if I do because then I can go with the shapes that I've made. So like this is a wave, so maybe it comes down, then up again and down, see? So if you follow the shapes that you've made, you stay consistent with this, what you've created, and it's gonna look a lot better for you. So maybe this ramps up and then down again right here, maybe up and then down again. Because I have my shadow color established for white water, so if I have this white sea foam, then I'll just continue I'll just continue these up. I'll try to connect it so that I need to find the lines and connect them. So right here, we'll say that the, I purposely made this curved so that I can make uh, a wave kind of rolling back out or like a little one that just, you know how they overlap each other. Okay, so you get all this white water right here in the front. This is where the shadow becomes a lot more important. So this is coming up on wet sand, so you can get both a shadow and a reflection, causing a lot of times that real hard edge, and they're a real defined little shadow. Maybe I'll, what color did I use? Yeah. One thing I can assure you is that my painting is wrong. They always are. What's fun is the little things that are right and the difference that it makes. You know, it's always a learning experience. So, feel free to paint a million wrong paintings and join the club. One thing that can really help with the realistic quality of these foreground waves breaking on the shore here is putting a shadow underneath these uh, little strands of sea foam here. I'm gonna paint this wherever I see the sea foam. I'm just gonna leave maybe this amount of space under it and then bring that color all the way down to the top of the other of the other bits of sea foam that I made. Now this could take forever to do a real clean job so I'll do a kind of a messy job and then just come back to it and fix anywhere that I messed up the white. Making it flush with the little strands of sea foam on, on the top edges, but then leaving space on the lower edges so that it has the appearance of these shadows. The point of this this video series is not to just load you up with a bunch of brush techniques. I mean, those, I mean, these are mine. It's pointless to try to be just like somebody else. You know, the, you'll get the most value out of, out of just gaining knowledge and ability and then applying it to your own preferences and techniques. I mean, invent something better than mine. I'm gonna change mine in a couple weeks. I always do. So I try to steer people away from just copying my techniques. Even though I always feel really proud when people say that they used my, you know, that something helped or, it's, I, you know, I try to encourage an adventurous approach. 
Let's put a little bit of white water right here to finish this off. Just make this just the littlest bit. 